Rice Check and Wheat Check, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are trying to get out of a huge castle on the planet Venus where Polidor is holding them prisoner. The two Space Patrollers are struggling to open a heavy door. So that's locked. But in a castle this size, there must be more doors. The chances are Polidor has them all locked. Yeah, by electronic control. Commander, something smells strange. I noticed it too. No, my eyes are burning. We've got to find Polidor and take our chances. He's flooding the castle with poison gas. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Robot of Borkena. Hi, gang. Captain Dick Tufeld and... The Man from Mars. Reporting to you on... The Man from Mars Totem Head with... Magic Forehead Vision. And, gang, this is the very last time we can offer you this terrific totem head on space patrol. So you better hurry. Get your box tops and quarters in the mail right away. Space patrollers, this is Cadet Happy. Alias, the man from Mars. <laughs> and smoke and rockets. Get yourself a totem head. Put it on and you can be a man from Mars, too. With magic forehead vision and two faces. One in front and one in back. Play neat tricks on your pals with magic forehead vision. You can see them. They can't see you. Works like a pair of X-ray eyes. With those two faces, you're coming and going both at the same time. And jump in Jupiter. The totem head is more than 12 inches high in real Martian colors. Red and yellow, green and black. Fantastic ears, nose, teeth, and a swell pointed head. But remember, this is the last time we can offer it. So send for yours today. The dead happy. The man from Mars is right, space patrollers. So for every totem head, send our rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address. To Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now today's Space Patrol adventure, the robot of Borkena. The Secretary General of the United Planets has just sent a spaceophone message from Jupiter asking Commander Corey to deliver some important documents to the Secretary's daughter, Carol. Right now, Buzz and Happy are in the Secretary General's home on the man-made planet Terra. The commander hands the sealed pouch to Carol. Since you're going to Jupiter in your own ship, Carol, I think it'd be a good idea if I assigned a space patrol agent to go with you. Surely no one but Father. You and Happy know that I'm carrying the papers, so what should you worry about? And lately, a lot of things we thought were secrets turned out to be other ones. He means Polidor, Carol. Oh, Polidor. I'm sure he's after more important information than what I'm taking to Father. Carol, there's information in this pouch that could be worth millions of credits. And Polidor isn't the only crook who'd like to get his hands on it. Oh, you sound so serious. I just want you to realize that with those papers in your ship, it's no longer a pleasure trip. It's government business. Oh, of course. Well, don't worry. I'll get them to Dad at the governor's conference. Buzz, did Father suggest a bodyguard for me? No. If he had, there'd be one aboard your ship with no argument. I suppose an escort would be a tip-off if this was an official trip. Yes, it would. Since you usually make space trips by yourself. That's another reason I'm not insisting. I'll happen. I'd better be going. Oh, do you have to? It's getting close to 2200, Carol. Isn't that when you were planning to blast off? Oh, Moses, I had no idea it was so late. I still have some last-minute passing to do. Of course. Come on, Hap. Yes, sir. Have a nice trip, Carol. Oh, thanks, Happy. Goodbye, Carol. Be careful. Goodbye, Buzz. And thanks. Just a minute. <gasps> Did I startle you, Miss Carlyle? What are you doing here? Is that any way to talk to a space patrol lieutenant? You're not a space patrol lieutenant. All right, so I stole the uniform. I look like a lieutenant. Well, lieutenant, I'll just get Commander Corey. Stay right where you are. If you try to scream, I'll use this ray gun on you. Who are you? What do you want? Why, I'm your escort. I'm going to get aboard your ship with you at the spaceport. You must be out of your mind. All I have to do is... You were about to say that all you have to do is signal the guards and they'd grab you. Isn't that right? I advise you not to try it, Miss Carlyle. If anything happens to me, I have friends on Jupiter where your father is. You wouldn't dare harm my father. Come, Jethro, you're wasting time. What was that? One of my friends. He's on another planet, but he can see and hear us perfectly. Hold it there. Yes. Jethro, take the girl in the document and hurry. Where's the voice coming from? From a small device called a detectoscope. 
When your father had this room redecorated last week, one of the workmen installed it. In all this time... I've heard of many interesting conversations, Miss Carlyle. Your father has such important guests. Come, Miss Carlyle. If we're noticed at the spaceport, it'll merely appear that a space patrol officer is escorting the Secretary General's daughter to Jupiter. Elsewhere, in the Coronine Mountains of Venus, hundreds of miles from the nearest city, stands the Castle of Borkenna. It was built during the 25th century by a wealthy space merchant as a showplace to entertain his friends in interplanetary commerce and society. Now, five centuries later, it is a deserted, crumbling ruin. It is here that Jedro has brought Carol. Here she is, Polidar. Welcome to Borkenna Castle, Miss Carlisle. Uh, Jedro, do you have any trouble? No, but I'd better camouflage Carol's spaceship. Yes, and later you can move it into the hangar under the mountain. Miss Carlyle, do you know who I am? You're a criminal who calls himself uh, Polidor. Yes, and you are one of the few people in the universe who have met me face to face as Polidor. As Commander Corey now knows, I'm Rudolf Janich, retired research chemist and amateur astronomer. I'm not the least interested or impressed. Aren't you curious why you were brought here? No. Of course you are. By bringing you here with the documents, I have a powerful control over Commander Corey. What do you mean? Isn't it obvious? To ensure your safety, Corey won't be quite as reckless in his efforts to capture me. Then you're going to let him know you abducted him. No. I'm going to lead Corey into a trap. Jedro. Yes, Florida. Take Miss Carlyle's identification bracelet. See that it's delivered to Corey at the Terra headquarters according to Penn. Right. And now, Miss Carlyle, after I lock you in your room, I'll set the stage for Corey's downfall. Hours later, in the central office of Space Patrol Headquarters on Terra, a very worried Commander Corey talks on the intercom to a security captain. You're now four hours overdue at Jupiter City. All private and commercial ships have been alerted, sir, just as you ordered, so far report negative. I talked to the space control operator who checked her out through the airlocks last night. Her ship blasted off on schedule. Yes, I know. I talked to the gate patrolman who saw Carol get aboard with her bodyguard. Commander, here's... Oh, just a minute, Captain. Captain, Excuse Captain, what did you say about a bodyguard? I said I checked with the gate patrol at the spaceport. I found a man who saw Carol board her ship with his space patrol lieutenant. Carol was going alone. I didn't assign an escort. What? Captain, get hold of the gate guard. Get a description of that lieutenant and check with personnel and operations. Alert the officer locator section. Yes, sir. Hurry out. Captain, did you hear that? Yes, sir. That was one of our officers with Carol. He'll have signed out with space operations. Unless he's gone OPWL. No, he hadn't had a off planet without lead case in five years. I think that lieutenant was a phony. A checkup will prove it. Oh, sir, this package is for you. A private messenger brought it. I'll look at it later. Who's it from? It doesn't say. It's my urgent, personal, and official okay. business. Open that happen. I'm getting out a special search plan on Carol. Yes, sir. Look at Locke. It's Commander Locke. My mm-hmm. girl's bracelet. Captain, let me see that. It's Carol's. Yes, sir. The identification bracelet her father gave her for her birthday. I see that piece of paper. Yes, sir. I have information that will help you locate Carol Carlyle. Through a set of circumstances, I was able to obtain this bracelet without the knowledge of her actual abductors. This puts me in a dangerous position. Still, I feel it my duty to cooperate with the space patrol. Wow, does that sound phony? There's more. If you, Commander, will land on Jupiter Moon Number 6 at exactly 1900 hours, universal start time, I will give you what facts I have. I regret being forced to use this indirect method, but to contact you openly... It cost me my life. He just happened to find Carol's bracelet. Does he think you're going to fall for that? Under the circumstances, there's only one thing to do. We're blasting off for Jupiter number six. At 1900 hours universal start time, Buzz lands the Terra 5 on the airless surface of Jupiter's sixth moon at a point directed in the anonymous message. Moments later, a small private cruiser arcs in and hovers until Buzz and Abby step out of their ship in their spacesuits unarmed. The cruiser settles slowly down to the rocky satellite and cuts rockets. For long minutes, the space patrollers wait. Then slowly, the cruiser's hatch opens, a ladder is lowered, and Buzz and Happy stride forward. I'll go first, Hap. Benicorian, get that Happy are aboard. Show yourself. Proceed forward. Dark. Would they light the ship with fireflies? That's close enough, gentlemen. Stand right there. 
Where is Carol Carlyle? There are certain preliminaries, Commander. Now let's get to them. Close that hatch so we can open these space pieces and talk man to man. Our conversation can best be carried on as we are, in our spacesuits. You've got us at a disadvantage. You can see us, but we can't see you. Your note said you weren't connected with whoever abducted Carol Carlyle. That is correct. I am not. Then why are you wearing that one-way vision face piece? Yeah, and why the dim lights? Yes, for an innocent man, you're taking a lot of precautions. Please, if you'll listen, you'll understand. You may not approve, but you will understand. I do know the men who are holding Miss Carlyle. Yes, and you're afraid of reprisals. You're scared. Now what? I want to ask a favor. In exchange for certain information. Keep talking. I have here on this small duty desk a bundle of currency. 200,000 credits. I want you to deposit it in the Terra Bank to the account of D.J. Whitney. But if I promise to deposit the money, you'll tell me where to find Miss Carlyle? Yes. Now will you deposit the money? Uh-huh. If you can prove that Carol is safe. That's easy. Space bone has been on since you came aboard. Polidor, put the girl on. Polidor. We might have known it. Carol, this is Buzz. Can you hear me? Yes, Buzz. Watch what you say, all of you. Are you all right? Have they harmed you? No, I'm all right. Sounds like Carol. Buzz, this is still... crap. They're going to frame you. Listen. That's enough of that. Polidor's got Carol, but we've got you. Is that so? Commander, he closed the hatch. Hope that we're taking you to our ship. You are? Cup him, Happy. I've got him. Oh! That takes care of the cadet. Now, Commander, you're next. I'm going to open that face piece of yours and give you a... That's your match this time, didn't you, Corey? I'll just pick you up and slam you against the bulkhead. Just like babies. Now I'll haul you boys back after and blast off for me. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Totem poles, totem poles, and more totem poles. Tall ones, small ones, middle-sized ones. In every Space Patroller's backyard, they're going up. All of them made out of those super scary, super spooky, man-from-Mars totem heads. Stacked one on top of the other. Say, gang, how about yours? Have you started building your totem pole yet? Well, if not, you'd better hurry, because today is positively the last time we can offer you on Space Patrol the terrific Man from Mars totem head. Yes, sir, today is the last day I can tell you about the fantastic fun you can have with the Man from Mars totem head. And magic forehead vision. That's the special secret vision plate on each totem head. When you wear it, you can see out, but nobody can see in. Colored red, yellow, green, and black. The man from Mars totem head is more than 12 inches high, with a face in front and a face in back. Two pointed ears, four weird eyes, a beak-like nose, and fang-like teeth. Get one or two, wear them one on top of the other, fool your friends and scare your pals. And remember, you can see them, but they can't see you with magic forehead vision. So get lots of totem heads. Stack them one on top of the other, and you have an honest-to-goodness totem pole to guard the door to your room or the gate to your backyard. But send for them right away, because today is the last time we can offer you the Man from Mars totem head. So for everyone you want, send a Rice Checks or Wheat Checks box top, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, the robot of Borkenna. Carol Carlyle has mysteriously disappeared on a space flight to Jupiter. Following instructions in an anonymous note delivered to Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Buzz and Happy blasted off to Jupiter's sixth moon. Meeting the informer, a man whose identity was completely hidden by his spacesuit, Buzz learned that Carol is being held captive by the super-criminal Polidor. Carol's space phone warning that they were in a trap caused the space patrollers to attack their treacherous informer. Amazingly, Buzz and Happy were overpowered, apparently with ridiculous ease by their adversary. Right now, they've regained consciousness in a dimly lit room. <laughs> Commander, are you okay? I'm still bothered from that slamming hell Lucky we had our spacesuits on. We'd have plenty of broken bones. Hey, we're not in our spacesuits now. No, we're not in that cruiser anymore. Stone floor, stone walls, we're on land. But what land? Well, the immediate problem is to get out of here. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who that guy was, but he could be the wrestling champ of the solar system. 
He handled both of us like we were a couple of kittens. Well, that's what old Trapper eventually. He took the trouble to hide his face, yet he displays the one characteristic that will set him off anywhere in the universe, his incredible strength. Yeah, but suppose he's smart and doesn't play Samson again. Half a man that could resist every temptation to show off just isn't human. Just isn't human. Sir, somebody's coming. Oh, so you two finally came out of it, huh? Don't try anything. Get him. A gun in one hand and a toolbox in the other. Must be hunting for work. <laughs> well, that's it. Have your fun while you can. Hey, Commander, this is the fellow that was in that cruiser. I recognize his voice. You're very clever. Come on, let's go, both of you. Where? Polidor wants to talk to you. Here, cadet, you lug this tool case. Me? I don't know whether I can. If it gives you trouble, well, I'll try it. <laughs> it's not so heavy. Out the door. You first, cadet. Now, Corey. Now what? <laughs> Drop that gun. I'll get it, Commander. Met your match this time, didn't you? <laughs> oh, good luck, Commander. You took care of him easy. But in his ship, he tossed us around like nothing. I could tell he wasn't superhuman the way he carried that toolbox. Say, maybe it was the spacesuit that gave him extra power. A spacesuit with muscles. This man wasn't in that spacesuit. But, sir, his voice. It's the same as on the ship. Somebody's coming. Stand back. Commander, look. A robot. Shut the door. Try to keep it out. That's no use, sir. He's stronger than both of us together. This is what licked us before, the robot. It's coming after us. I'll try the ray gun, but I don't think it'll work. Never even phased it. Hand over the weapon, Commander. Polidor's voice, coming out of the robot. The gun, Commander. Or do you want the robot to take it away from you? That could be quite painful, you know. Okay. Catch. He caught it. No, testing the robot's reflexes, weren't you, Corey? Like he's strange. They're superhuman. What have you done with Carol? You are going to see her in a moment. She's in the other part of the dungeon. Dungeon? Of course. You were in Vortana Castle on Venus. Now, since you have knocked my friend down, the robot will escort you to Miss Carlyle's suite. So, the robot was wearing the spacesuit. Now I don't feel so ashamed of getting licked. Huh. Chedro was here in the castle all the time. You heard his voice through the detectorscope on the robot's head. The robot piloted the ship from Jupiter's sixth moon here to Venus. Yes, the robot is quite clever, provided he's controlled by a clever man. Out the door, gentlemen, and left to the corridor. Let's go ahead. Unbolt the door, Corey, and go in. Oh, it's my fault you're here. Take it easy, Karen. Polidor didn't get rough with you, did he? No, I'm all right, but I shouldn't have warned you. Forget it. Happy and I would have tackled this robot anyway. Sure. That's such an ugly, horrible thing. Yeah, it looks better in a spacesuit. The robot is designed for utility, not for beauty. It's Polidor's voice. Yeah. I'm getting used to hearing his voice boom out of walls, spaceships, and now this animated ash can. Gus here. Gus. The robot. If he's going to be around, he ought to have a name of his own. That's the robot. Somehow it fits his personality. It's time we got down to business, Corey. Fine, but let's talk man to man, not through this mechanical monstrosity. Yeah, and this dungeon is cold and damp and reeks of paint. It's giving me a headache. A fine place to put the Secretary General's daughter in a room full of paint cans. If you cooperate, you wouldn't be here long. The paint, incidentally, is to be used on my spaceship. I find it necessary to change markings and identification numbers. Don't you know that's illegal? We're wasting time. Between the three of you, I should learn some interesting facts about the space patrol and government plans. You're still wasting your time. Remember the robot. He can be very persuasive. Corey, we'll start with the space patrol code system. Come, come, I'm waiting. Well, this is going to take some time. I think I'll pull up a can of paint and sit down. Oops. The lid's loose on this one. Let me see that. Huh? Sure. Here, come on. Corey, what are you going to do with that can of paint? Black paint, not too thick, not too thin. Stand back, Carl, away from Gus. Paint isn't going to stop this robot. No, but it'll slow him down. Wow, all over Gus's head and down his front. I can't see. Confound you, Corey. Now, I'll put the empty can over his head for good measure. Oh, look, look out, Buzz. Don't let him grab you. Have the robot drop the ray gun. Get it. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Get it before this. 
Come on, Carol. Pat, pull that door shut and throw the bolt. That was close. I can still hear Gus stamping around in there with a can on his head. That was a great idea, Commander. Before that robot would be any more use, pull it over and have to get the can off its head and wipe the paint off the detectorscope. Poor Gus, just like a blind Samson. Mm -hmm. Poor Gus, my eye. He's a walking pile driver. Carol, do you know how to get out of this castle? They brought me down that stairway over there. Come on. Try the door, Hal. That's locked. Castle this size, there must be more doors. Well, chances are Polidor has them all locked. Yeah, by electronic control. I was hoping to get Carol to a safe place and then search this castle till we found Polidor. Buzz, something smells strange. I noticed it too, sir. My eyes are burning. Yeah. Polidor's flooding the castle with poison gas. Now we've got to find them. Buzz, Carol, and Happy rush through the bleak corridors of the huge castle. They try door after door. All are locked. And each moment the toxic vapor becomes more and more unbearable burning their lungs, making them gasp for breath. Right now, they're painfully groping their way down a dimly lit corridor near a winding stairway. Even if we do run into Polidor, how are we going to handle him? I can hardly see. He'll be in the same fix we are. He's probably shut himself up in an airtight room waiting for the gas to finish us. The coward. He knows we've got a gun now, so now he won't... Happy, listen. Somebody's up the stairs. This must be the central stairway of the castle. Goes up to the tower and down to the dungeon. Say, say, if we go up, we can get away from this gas. Look up there. About four flights. There are two of them. No, they're wearing spacesuits. Polidor and Jedro. So that's how they're avoiding the gas. <laughs> door up there leading outside. Yeah. And I saw a shaft of light. <laughs> if they don't lock it, we can follow them and get out of here. Look, something's wrong with one of them. Hey, look how he's staggering around. Maybe there's a leak in a spacesuit. Hey, that means, that means that, look. He's falling off the railing. The other one isn't even helping him. Stand back. He's going to drop down the stairs. <laughs> Happy, you stay here with Carol. There isn't much chance he's alive, but we can't leave him there. Sure, sir. <coughs> Listen. Someone's coming up the stairs. <coughs> Carol, who else is in the castle? Uh, I don't know. Just Jedro and Polidor, I thought. Smoke and rockets, Commander. Look. It's Jedro. Yeah, it's... It's me, but don't worry, I'm not. Armed. Get me out of here. Hey, wait a minute. You're here, and one of those men in the spacesuit was Polidor. Who was the other one? The robot. Yeah, that's the one that fell down the shaft. How do you know? Because Jedro made him fall, isn't that right? Yes. Polidor ran out of me, left me here to die, but I got this. It's one of the robot control mechanisms. Polidor had the other. We were fighting for control of the robot. Polidor up there, and you down below. Yes. And that's why he staggered. But why would he take the trouble to put the robot in a spacesuit? Perhaps to confuse us in case we caught up with him. <laughs> and he figured Gus was more used to him now than Jedro. Come on. Let's go up the stairs and out that door. You can't. It won't open. Polidor had the only key. Well, maybe we can break it down. It's no use. You mean we're locked in this castle? Yes, Polidor thought of everything. We can't even shut off that poison gas. Got to break that door open. But Jedro says we can't. Jedro, down at the bottom of the stairwell is something that might help us. The robot. Gus? He must be smashed in a thousand pieces. Try that control, Jedro. Hurry. Okay, I'll, I'll cut it on. <coughs> it might work at that. You see this little screen that just lit up? Yeah, it's, it's the robot shadow. Now, let's see if he'll move. Oh, his arms are moving. See if you can get him on his feet. Hurry, we can't hold out much longer. Hey, it works. Gus is walking. Once I get him started, he'll follow the railing right up the stairs. Come on. We'll go up to the door and wait for him. Oh, Gus is still coming. Try the door, just in case. <laughs> oh, it's no use, sir. Liza, I, I feel faint. Keep fighting, Carol. Jedro can get any more speed out of that robot. There he is, coming up the last flight. Uh, he's hardly damaged at all. It's a big dent in the helmet, but outside of that, he's all right. Stand back and give him room. Go ahead, Jedro. Yeah, sure. Uh, Commander, uh, Commander, catch him. I've got him. Oh, what a time for him to pass out. I've been watching him work the controls. Let's see if I can operate, Gus. That's it. He's raising his arms. Here goes. Keep out of the way. He's going to start swinging. That a boy, Gus. Give it all you've got. Hooray. Good boy, Gus. We're free. Happy you take care of Jedro. Bring him out into the air. Come on, Carol. You'll be all right in a minute. Oh, I'm fine now. Oh. That air. Hey. All we got to do now is go down these steps outside the castle and... Well, come on, Jedro, on your feet. Yeah, thanks. Hey, 
Pull the door. He's getting away in a spaceship. Where's the document? No. No, he hasn't got him. I sneaked him away from him and hid him. Yeah. Inside the robot. That's why I tried to get control of it. A gang of cutthroats. Polidor runs out on you. You double-cross Polidor. And it looks like the only decent guy in the outfit is Gus. Hey, hey, Commander, did you work the robot control just then? No, why? Gus moved. Maybe he's got a short circuit from the fall. He's holding out his right arm. Happy. He just paid Gus a compliment. I think he wants to shake hands. Huh? Well, put her there, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> A preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. The last of the spook from outer space. The last of the walking, talking totem pole. Yes, Space Patrollers, this is the very last time I can tell you about the fun you can have with the man from Mars totem head with magic forehead vision. Wear one, and you're the spook from outer space. The totem head is 12 inches high from head to shoulders. And with magic forehead vision, you can see out, but nobody sees in. Wear two, and you're the walking, talking totem pole. You really look just like an honest-to-goodness totem pole, too, because each man from Mars totem head comes in honest-to-goodness totem colors, red, yellow, green, and black, with honest-to-goodness-looking totem ears, nose, eyes, and teeth. And man, oh man, just wait until you get yours. But you better not wait, because you've got to send for yours right away. Because this is the last time I can offer you the Man from Mars totem head with magic forehead vision. Now, for each one you want, send a rice checks or wheat checks box top, together with your name and address, and 25 cents in coin, to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy, dressed as prospectors, are tramping across the great Martian desert toward Polidor's hideout. Getting closer. That must be the hideout right over that dune. Can't expect to sneak up on him. Surprising. Best we can hope for is that we can get close before he recognizes us. Uh-oh. I see him. He sees us. Just keep going. Can't tell whether it's Polidor or not. But he's got a gun. Oh, what do you want? A car is back in the desert about two miles. That's too bad. You won't be needing it anymore. Drop that. He's got a blast gun. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Trial by Terror, when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present Space Patrol. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey and Nina Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Bela Kovach, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks again present exciting action on Space Patrol. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your newspaper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed